Joel Scalzo will be with us till five minutes into the next hour. WorldAffairsBrief.com. One of the smartest people when it comes to global analysis, because I do a lot of research, so I can tell when somebody knows what they're talking about. He's taught me a lot. We all teach each other. I want to get his take on this first, on some other waterfront issues that he didn't even know I was going to bring up. Then at the bottom of the hour, we will detail geopolitically the headlines. NATO general says we may have World War III. Uh, uh, the NSA analyst, we may have World War III. George Soros, we may have World War III. What's really behind the sandcastles in the South China Sea? the bases they're building, what's behind all this, we're going to be breaking it down today. But first, about a month ago, I said, you know, I don't want to just air ads on the radio here, especially on the internet side, that's the podcast and the millions that tune in via the streams and other systems. I want to start having our great reporters do one-minute InfoWars bulletins vignettes. And boy, they've taken to it like a fish to water. Uh, new reports every day. I'm going to create an archive on Infowars.com so stations can just grab these and air these whenever they'd like as well and put their own tags on them if they wish. We're going to also uh, start providing it to folks that want to put video to it on YouTube. Uh, by next week, we're going to have a page where when they upload these, they're there for you, where you can just record the stream and do it yourself. Don't wait for us. Just take action. You may wait for the rest of your life. We're trying as hard as we can. Uh, but we need the funding to get the crew to build up and expand our reach. Everything we do is a success by the grace of God. All the glory goes to God. Lord knows my best works are dirty rags, as the Bible says. But everything we're doing is having a huge effect, and that shows us as we lens up, as we magnify up, as we amplify, we can have devastating effects on the globalist, and so can you. But I want to just air one of these reports because what I love about David Knight and other reporters is they get it. They do multifaceted reports that don't just say Peter Singer, you know, wants to free chimpanzees. Well, I, I want to treat chimpanzees well as well. The problem is Peter Singer is the grand poobah of PETA. Peter Singer says kill kids up to age three or five. This is now being pushed openly. They only want to give animals rights just so government can say they have the votes of the animals and that they represent them as guardians to trump all of our rights. So that's what this animal rights movement is about. It's very, very dangerous. And they're going to use the extremes of factory farming and things that are abominations and bad for humans to then have a whole new revolution that's anti-human. And you hear this one-minute report, the reports Shikari Jackson's doing and Rob Dew and Leanne McAdoo and just the whole crew are simply amazing and I want to encourage my writers to do that, of all the things I just mentioned. And know that those are destructive lifestyles. So the larger question is, why is this agenda being pushed? And it's what Joel Scowls and the editor of World Affairs Brief always talks about. The global social engineers do not want you to be able to discriminate. And by discriminate, when you're driving down the road, there is a dotted line, stripes, and reflectors down the middle so you can discriminate which lane you're in so you don't go into oncoming traffic. Vision helps you discriminate. Taste tells you what is good food or good water. Smell. And they've moved from political correctness saying don't say racist things and group guilt to now brown paper bags are banned in the city of Seattle state government, city government, because brown might hurt someone's feelings. No one ever said a brown bag was connected to race. No one ever said that it was racist. It doesn't matter. It's about banning whatever they want, whenever they want, and restricting speech. And now Senator Rubio has come out and said, gay agenda's next step is to define mainstream Christianity as hate speech. Well, Europe's already done that. But see, Rubio needs some red meat he can talk about while not actually defending marriage. And now we have the headlines. Court bans choose life license plate as patently offensive in shocking ruling. If you go to the story, it's just a little normal license plate saying, I choose life. Just saying, I choose life is offensive. The appeals court in New York agreed and said it's banned. 
The Second Circuit Court of Appeals in Manhattan ruled Choose Life license plates are patently offensive. You can put on there that you're a slut. You can put the word cocaine on there. This has been in court. But you will not say adopt babies. You will not say you're pro-life. This is the tyranny. Like the woman that got attention a few days ago, court-martialed in the Marines because on her computer screensaver, it said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Be a great slogan for the U.S. military. But no, it's banned. I have another report here. The new Jurassic Park movie is being criticized because it has a male hero. I'm not kidding. Every other movie, Hollywood admits they have a directive, has women as the heroes and men as bad. The new Mad Max, Fury Road, is really feminist road where all the men are killed at the end to create a utopia. This isn't to empower women. It's to make women be all alone, families destroyed. This is a scientific takedown plan, just like Cloward and Piven wants to bankrupt our economy to make us domesticated. Joel Skousen will be with us till five minutes into the next hour, worldaffairsbrief.com, one of the smartest people when it comes to global analysis, because I do a lot of research so I can tell when somebody knows what they're talking about. He's taught me a lot. We all teach each other. I want to get his take on this first, on some other waterfront issues that he didn't even know I was going to bring up. Then at the bottom of the hour, we will detail geopolitically the headlines. NATO general says we may have World War III. Uh, uh, the NSA analyst, we may have World War III. George Soros, we may have World War III. What's really behind the sandcastles in the South China Sea, the bases they're building? What's behind all this? We're going to be breaking it down today. But first, about a month ago, I said, you know, I don't want to just air ads on the radio here, especially on the Internet side. That's the podcast and the millions that tune in via the streams and other systems. I want to start having our great reporters do one-minute InfoWars bulletins vignettes. And, boy, they've taken to it like a fish to water. Uh, new reports every day. I'm going to create an archive on InfoWars.com so stations can just grab these and air these whenever they'd like as well and put their own tags on them if they wish. We're going to also uh, start providing it to folks that want to put video to it on YouTube. Uh, by next week, we're going to have a page where when they upload these, they're there for you. Or you can just record the stream and do it yourself. Don't wait for us. Just take action. You may wait for the rest of your life. We're trying as hard as we can. Uh, but we need the funding to get the crew to build up and expand our reach. Everything we do is a success by the grace of God. All the glory goes to God. Lord knows my best works are dirty rags. As the Bible says, but everything we're doing is having a huge effect. And that shows us as we lens up, as we magnify up, as we amplify, we can have devastating effects on the globalist, and so can you. But I want to just air one of these reports, because what I love about David Knight and other reporters is they get it. They do multifaceted reports that don't just say, Peter Singer, you know, wants to free chimpanzees. Well, I, I want to treat chimpanzees well as well. The problem is Peter Singer is the grand poobah of PETA. Peter Singer says kill kids up to age three or five. This is now being pushed openly. They only want to give animals rights just so government can say they have the votes of the animals and that they represent them as guardians to trump all of our rights. So that's what this animal rights movement is about. It's very, very dangerous. And they're going to use the extremes of factory farming and things that are abominations and bad for humans to then have a whole new revolution that's anti-human. And you hear this one-minute report, the reports Jakari Jackson's doing and Rob Dew and Leanne McAdoo and just the whole crew are simply amazing. And I want to encourage my writers to do these. I want to encourage listeners to do one-minute pieces that you email showtips at infowars.com. And if they're good, we'll play them here on the radio. I'm here to get everybody in the fight. Everybody. That's how we're going to win. And out of that whole field of people taking action, we're going to find the naturals that are going to be the next wave leaders against the globalist. Let's go to that one-minute clip, and then we're going to go to Joel Skousen. Here it is. A hearing schedule for today will focus on whether two chimpanzees held by Stony Brook University are property of the university or must be set free. Champions of the concept of speciesism, like Peter Singer, argue that the chimps should have human rights because they are, quote, 
comparable to three-year-old humans and their capacity for self-awareness, unquote. The problem is, Singer has argued that Down's syndrome children should be euthanized because, quote, they will never be able to play the guitar or develop an appreciation of science fiction, learn a foreign language, or chat with us about the latest Woody Allen movie, unquote. Singer's speciesism is not about elevating animal treatment. It's about creating a justification for devaluing human life in all conditions, at all ages. We will not allow scientific elitists and eugenicists like Peter Singer to deny human liberty and dignity. This is David Knight reporting for Infowars.com. That 60-second piece is an is a education. Decoding the propaganda. They set the precedent that they're the moral authority. They send out, you know, some 20-year-old college student to scream and say, I kill my babies, I love Satan. Uh, we're going to ban your free speech because we're so moral, as you saw last week or heard last week here live on the radio, shutting down a pro-life demonstration we had. And they were so arrogant because they're the moral authority. And they talked on their website about the red terror and how they want to take us out as if they could. I don't know how you're evil but then think you're good, but there is that. There's that weird mindset, you know, the top globalists are pure evil and know it and love it. But their minions believe they're good, but have every manifestation from cloaking themselves in black to praising and hailing Satan, to praising the death of children, to the gleam in their eye. To, and, and, and they also have the cloak of weakness on them at the same time. It's very biblical. I'm going to skip this network break, last one of the day, to give Joel Skousen more time, worldaffairsbrief.com. Joel, I've been ranting for 10 minutes while you've been holding, but I wanted to open up with this breakdown of the assault on life, the assault on judgment, the assault on decency. They're not truly uh, pushing where we're tolerant. It means we must give up who we are, like I guess in Sodom and Gomorrah, where the crowd comes to the door and says, you know, give us your kids and then, you know, give us those men that are with you that are really angels or we're going to kill you. I mean, it's really about us submitting and being conquered by them, isn't it, Joel? It is indeed, Alex. Um, I stated many years ago when I was interviewed, one of the few token conservatives interviewed by television of Washington, D.C. on the Martin Luther King passage of the uh, Civil Rights Bill. And I said, you know, this is a very dangerous bill because it represents an intrusion into people's personal choices on their own property. And of course, the Supreme Court had ruled that uh, once you offer service to the public, it no longer becomes private property, but public property, which is a very terrible ruling. The problem that I see in all of these things is there's a legal principle here that's violated, and that is you'd never allow in law an unlimited system of lawmaking. And that's what intrusions into discrimination do. It has to be defended like free speech. In other words, you have to defend free speech no matter if you, love, if you hate it, if it's offensive. On their own property, people are free to speak their entire will. And people need to be free to choose who, with whom they will associate with uh, on their own property. And, of course, the Supreme Court has cut into what is your own property so that if anything is uh, audible by the public, it ceases to become private. I don't know where this is going, Alex, but I'll tell you, uh, it is going to attack people who they are. They're not satisfied, as you said, with tolerance. They want to destroy and silence those of us who believe that there are certain things that hold negative judgments about certain people's behavior. They do fear judgment. Yeah, judgment's always been hated by socialists. You know, the free market runs on judgment. And there's a natural propensity of human beings to dislike other people's judgment because they judge them as they are. You know, the free market says... Uh, really gives everyone, uh, over time, rewards according to their true worth. And that's to be judged by each individual. And so you say, well, I'm being misjudged. Well, fine, go to the next person. Try to get a, uh, a better judgment from them. You know, it's a, it's a process of negotiation in the free markets to get people to accept who you really are. But if everybody's, you know, got a negative judgment, you ought to look to yourself and say, what is that judgment and is it crucial? Socialism offers people a higher level of reward than the free market would per true worth. A uniform level, which is a, you know, a denial 
of people's ability to judge to have to give people uniform value for differing worth. I know that's a little philosophical, but that's really the basis. People well, also, I mean, I mean, I agree with you, but look at how the so-called left, the totalitarian left, will say never judge us. In fact, they call it censorship. If you disagree with them, that's now censorship. No, censorship is shutting them down, blocking them, but then all they do is judge all day and take the moral high ground on a high horse telling us how to think. I mean, it's just so bankrupt. Indeed it is, Alex. It's hypocritical. It's um, uh, a terrible violation of our particular rights. You know, we really, it's just like education. And unfortunately, you know, conservatives have bought into this for years. They've caused their own problems um, in public education. All education should be competing because all education has values. It is completely inappropriate for even the majority to impose a Christian education or an evolutionary education or any type of specific education on other people. All people in education ought to pay for the education they have. You can have public schools, but only the users of those schools ought to pay for it. And people ought not to be penalized for taking their dollars elsewhere so they can choose a non-evolutionary education or they can choose to have Christian values. They can choose to pray in school if they want. But the, the left, of course, wants to, in the name of democracy, in the name of majority, to actually bind people to a view. And, and Christians, unfortunately, have said, you know, we want Christianity in our schools. And I say, they're not our schools. They are government schools. And once you give government the power to determine values by majority rule, what happens when the government becomes Marxist? Then the majority is Marxist, or if the majority becomes Marxist, then they have just as much right as you have claimed as a Christian to impose their ideology. Exactly. That's why we do have the separation of church and state, but not in the way they distort it, to say a Christian can't be in school and have a Bible and say they're Christian uh, or have it on their book bag. Uh, no, it means the government can't select what the state-run religion uh, is, whether it be atheism, Marxism, fake environmentalism. And notice they're now saying, we have socialist health care, so now we're going to decide what you eat and what you do because we're all paying for each other. It's a total trap. It is slavery. It's the same thing with the safety laws, you know. Because the government decides to pay for indigent people who get hurt by motorcycles, for example, we can mandate that everybody has a motorcycle helmet because the public is being imposed upon by having to pay for uninsured people. Uh, it's a false uh, paradigm. It's an unlimited extension of lawmaking power. Once you allow government to dictate what is good for you, there's virtually no limit to the ability to intrude in our lives. It must be forever prohibited uh, in law. Of course, you know, the Constitution is utterly disregarded nowadays by the courts. I want to get into some of the current issues with Joel Scals in a World Affairs Brief, um, one of the top uh, privacy and uh, security home builders. Uh, best-selling author, uh, former Marine Corps uh, fighter bomber pilot in the Vietnam era. Of course, his uncle was Cleon Skousen, and he just joined us, the Naked Communist. And he's headed up some of the largest true conservative constitutional organizations uh, in the country and watched this entire de-evolution. If I go back to the days of Barry Goldwater that talked just like you, or the days of Ronald Reagan when he was, you know, a governor or running, he, you know, he talked about the New World Order, Trilateral Commission, this plan— they then demonized it in Hollywood and movies and then made people think it didn't exist. And then now we see a reemergence, somewhat of an awakening, because they're now actually accelerating all this. And we see an outright demonization of the freedom movement, an attempt to cause civil unrest as the pretext to federalize police. Uh, we see power grabbing at an unprecedented level. I agree with you that it always takes longer than what people say. Uh, but at the same time, this massive turning up of the heat, ratcheting up, A, do you agree they're accelerating things? And then B, why do you think they're accelerating things so fast? Is it from a position of weakness or a position of strength? Well, clearly they are accelerating things. Uh, it's not relative to us as much as it is to as people become acclimated to accepting the new agendas put forth by the media, such as non-discrimination, it opens a floodgate. And all of a sudden, as I predicted, clear back in the 80s on that television program, I said, you, you ban discrimination based on race, and it's going to be next, you know, based upon 
femininity. It's going to be a weight control. It's going to be based upon uh, sexual orientation. There's no limit to what they can start uh, to do. So the, the acceleration really more is the fact that there is less resistance anymore uh, because of the dumbing down of people. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, it's an avalanche, but they still have a long way to go. And they fear, they still fear the re revolt of the people if it becomes obvious to um, many more people than it is right now that there really is an actual conspiracy. And that's why they must denigrate conspiracy, because that is the key factor to waking up millions of people is to realize there's a conspiracy in the media, in education, in all things. And that's why the media must silence all conspiracy believers and, and denigrate them openly. It's the key. It's not electing Republicans. The key is explain to people exactly. how very bad it is. Because if you don't realize it's premeditated, it's a long-term plan, none of it will make sense. But once you admit that, you could spend the rest of your life reading globalist documents, globalist books, globalist statements. The, the scary part is it's not even hidden. But so much of the public refuses to admit they're being conquered. And then you add to it that we're being conquered by very wicked people. I've said this hundreds of times, Joel. If we were being conquered by a superior culture and that and and we had a tyrannical culture, I would join with it. But I see the power elite locally and regionally joining with it as if they're winning. When you study this, it really is at its bottom destructive, hateful, death-filled, uh, cancerous. I mean, how do you describe this system? Because as we get further into it, and as I research it more, you, you really do come away with the fact that you're fighting pure evil. I mean, it really is the devil. It is, and I've long talked about the satanic basis for the globalist movement. I mean, just if you look at what I call the generational effect, how does any single evil person start creating a system where you're going to develop over a century and a half two evil enemies like Russia and China and set them against the world and have an intermediate enemy like Hitler take them down one at a time and create a global new world order through war and conflict. I mean, there's no human being who can see that far in advance, let alone project that kind of thing against his own best wishes. I mean, it has to be revelatory. It has to be satanic at its basis just because of the long-term uh, prognosis, the long-term plan and agenda that we see just going down like clockwork. Fascinating. Now, they, do have setbacks. they do have setbacks occasionally, just like this Syria situation where, uh, you know, Kerry made that mistake at that London press conference giving Syria the out to take down his chemical weapons, and it set back the globalist agenda for a year and a half. They had to create ISIS in response in order to have an excuse to get back in, and they're in the process of taking down Syria with ISIS. Um, I'm covering in the World Affairs Brief tomorrow, for example, how fellow fighter pilots like myself, modern ones, are complaining they're not allowed to attack actual people on the ground. Empty buildings, yes. In other words, this whole air attack against ISIS is false. So smoke screen, stay there. I want to come back and give you the floor on that. That'll lead us into geopolitical, all of it. How, how big a deal is it that the defense intelligence document came out to, to uh, Judicial Watch admitting three years ago that they were creating the Al-Qaeda ISIS forces? But when we come back first, I want to get back with Joel Skousen, joelskousen.com, worldaffairsbrief.com, into when was it in your life when you came face-to-face -face in research studying it, or did you have this moment like I had, when you realized, oh my gosh, it really is true, I believed it, but now I know it, there is a devil, you study it so much, you look at it, you know you're now looking at Satan, and it's chilling to really know it's all true. It is a spiritual battle. This planet is a test. It's so epic. Stay with us. We're our guest, we're going to get into the Al-Qaeda situation, the ISIS situation. Uh, you can pull up mainstream news articles that finally came out, thank God, where defense intelligence admitted they funded Al-Qaeda groups out of Saudi Arabia and ISIS to topple Assad. That's all admitted. I mean, we've had the Tosh Plumley whistleblowers and people on talking about the shipments. And believe me, the Justice Department starts calling us and showing up when we do these interviews. I mean, this is real. It's like Skousen always says, you got real whistleblowers? The feds show up. Well, guess what? They do. The only reason we're still on air is by the grace of God. I'm here to tell you, I know we have protection.
And again, ladies and gentlemen, I grew up a Christian, but, you know, when you're a teenager and stuff, you have your doubts. But I always had a spiritual connection to God and had a lot of interesting experiences in my life, so I knew there was a spiritual realm. But studying this, getting deeply into it, looking at it, seeing how through different people and different institutions, there's the mystery of evil the Bible talks about, this manifestation. And the globalists hurt their own interest so they can hurt the planet, the genetic code of humans. The devil is against free will if you read the Bible. The devil is against free will but sells you that he's going to give you free will. Well, no, the devil just gives you knowledge. I mean, they, they had knowledge in the Garden of Eden. They had knowledge. They weren't idiots. They had free will to eat the apple. It's just they didn't have knowledge of evil thought processes. For me to be able to understand evil and study it, you get into the mind of it. As Nietzsche said, look out when you look into the abyss, lest you become the abyss. Or don't dance with the devil because you can become the devil. Let me tell you, studying this 25 years, getting close to it, having to get into the mindset of the system, it's uh, make sure you got a strong will. That's why I get angry and upset over the years because... I'm spiritually awake and aware. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. I'm a worldly, fleshly person like anybody else. It's very upsetting, though, to be awake and conscious and to know the enemy's there hurting people. And I'm like an animal struggling in a cage trying to get out. And I want everybody else to want to struggle with me to get out because God gives us free will and all these blessings. You follow God's promises. I'm not trying to be a preacher because they won't preach this now. They've been taken over, most major churches. You get blessed. The problem is you get so blessed you become spoiled. So it's a paradox of free will. But at least my heart points towards God and justice. People that revel in evil, though, and I see the spirit spreading. Good is spreading, but evil is also spreading. And I'm afraid to say evil is spreading faster, as Joel Skousen said. Not even so much evil. It's like the grand delusion is here, the great delusion where the people aren't there. They're in a trance. Joel Skousen, I'm going to shut up now, let you finish up with free will, the whole spiritual nature, because I think it's important to go to the bottom of the rabbit hole, then get into ISIS, Al-Qaeda, geopolitics, Soros Singh, World War III, the South China Sea. I want you to move around the world in the next 25 minutes or so before we end the hour. Uh, Joel Skousen. Well, speaking of uh, on the spiritual process, uh, I perhaps got more, most of my inclination about understanding things through the promptings of conscience. You know, people don't give enough attention to the workings of conscience in their mind because it's actually very judgmental. One of the signs of false religion is this unconditional loving God, this non-judgmental. Uh, it's really Satan's voice uh, infiltrating the church when they preach those doctrines. God Yes, he can love, and it's, it's actually fairly conditional, even though he has an outstretched arm to people. But it's very judgmental. If you listen to conscience, there are warning signals, nervous feelings that you'll get when you're reading a news story telling you something's not quite right here. And that's how I work through the World Affairs Brief. You know, I'm a small two-man shop. I don't have a big staff, but I can detect because of my attention to the workings of conscience when I'm reading disinformation or when there's falsehoods uh, there. And I'm not saying it's perfect. You st always have to struggle. It's not like you're getting direct revelation, but, you know, you get that little tap on the shoulder and it says, ah, ah something. Well, you're using your world knowledge, your understanding, your lens, and then you're putting your gut or your spirit, uh, your discernment as the final meter. That's right. And what I'm saying is I think we've, we're losing the battle in large part because even our conservatives are trying to work by rules rather than tap into the spiritual source that can direct us more specifically than a rulemaking approach or a generalist approach. Uh, you know, things are so much more complex than just restore the Constitution. Heck, the lawyers don't mind if we restore the Constitution. They know how to interpret it because there's hundreds of thousands of case law. And so we really have to get beyond these banner type uh, slogans and get down to real understanding of the way that human beings operate, why we're being undermined, and how we save our, our, our children. You know, uh, Dr. Creekmore of survivalblog.com did a survey of uh, survivalists and preppers. He said, where do you get your news source? And he was shocked because Alex Jones was down in number four position. He expected these people to be very, very, um, you know, up on this. And guess what was first? Fox News. 
And I, I look back and I think, how many of my clients, uh, you know, that I've worked for over the years designing high security residence retreats, I walk into their home and they're watching Fox News. In fact, they have it on all day long. Or Glenn Beck was number two. And these are glitzy social networks with attractive talking head women and, uh, you know, presenters, but they'll never talk about conspiracy. And not one mention. In fact, Fox News has Hannity and and um, and O'Reilly, which will literally excoriate a person who even hints that he believes in conspiracy. And that's supposedly from a conservative news. But when, when it always comes out, everything's a conspiracy. I mean, look right here. Rand Paul in Chicago. Crime, not a racial thing. It's a spiritual problem. But again, uh, the, the more and more people that are getting into reality understand it is a spiritual problem. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it really is. And it's a personal spiritual problem. I mean, the fact that we, you know, conservatives who are listening, and I judge a person's um, astuteness, not if they just come to conservative political thing, but they should be drifting away from public education. They should be drifting away from uh, uh, drugs and the standard medical protocols into more natural health things. They ought to be more self-disciplined. They ought to be eating better, listening to promptings about nutrition. That, to me, is the sign that a person's listening to conscience, is that he starts getting all of the things that God is interested in, purifying people and helping them become better. And when they're a John OneNote person, only conservative, but they're fat, dumb, and, and uh, overweight and undisciplined and watching television all day, something's wrong with this judgment process. And if we're going to win this battle, we've got to school our people to be much more attentive to the little signals of conscience, the temporal signals that they disregard all day, all day long. Well, the enemy has their signals, too, from their side, and they're certainly following their signals. Yes, they are. And they know how, you know, Satan is an expert at playing to people's natural proclivities, the natural man. And, you know, conscience works against the natural man, and it's always after you to get you to improve, to change. And if you've been the same for 10 years or getting worse, I can tell you, you're not listening to the promptings. They're there, and you're, you're waving them off and saying, I don't want to hear that. And there's penalties. I think in the last days when these real terrible tribulations come upon us in the world and this war descends that I've been talking about for so many years, I think if people haven't learned to listen to the still small voice of conscience in the temporal affairs, they're going to, God has been offended and they're going to be cut off from a lot of good, not in an absolute sense. They just don't get the full range of signals that a person gets who's attentive and the Lord recognizes, hey, this person really wants truth. He wants to hear my voice. And therefore, that's where the real blessings come from. Undoubtedly, when we get in the quiet, still place of the Most High, which I can't hardly stand to do because then the discernment's so intense and I see what the enemy's doing that it totally freaks me out. I understand why people run to the flesh and, and, and run into all this because reality is so much more intense than the world's fake reality that I know why people can't handle it. Uh, it, it, it it's, but it's scary to realize that, that true discernment is a blessing and a curse. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, I often said in my youth when I was learning to struggle with conscience, because I was a pretty good violator of conscience relative to homework when I was growing up, you know, always being prompted to do my homework before I went out and played. I was always violating it. Got some bad grades because of it until I learned, hey, this signal's here to help. And when I finally really buckled down and started really listening, I realized, boy, this God is trying to really make you better, and he's after you all the time. And uh, But the more you listen and the more you use self-control to obey, the greater the blessings come, the better things work out in life. And I can here to tell you, at uh, pushing almost 70 years, um, it's a, you know, nobody is a success in life. Nobody makes good decisions about children, about getting married, any of those things, unless they tie into that book voice of the Lord, that still small voice inside your mind. I want to get into geopolitics, but one last question from your deep study. Looking at the enemy, looking at the devil, looking at this spiritual force that if you study our enemies, they all worship it. I mean, they're, they're not atheists. They want us to be atheists, so we're totally blind to the fact this war is going on. But what would the devil do if he had total power and gets his way? We know that's not going to happen. I guess it happens for a day. Uh, and in terms of the Bible, I guess a few years or whatever. But 
if the devil had full true power of God, what makes the devil tick? What would Satan do? You know, I really actually think the second coming happens at the time when the devil does, in fact, have almost all power except for small enclaves of people who are true to the Lord and are being protected. Um, and I think there's going to be massive uh, death and wars. He's really not interested in elevating or even saving his own minions. He's interested in destroying people. He's anti-truth. He hates all truth. He hates God. And uh, he promises, you know, immunity to people. I think he promises immunity to his minions against God's judgment, but he can't deliver. That's what Isaiah 14 is all about. Now he descends in chains in hell, and they all, all the great and powerful, who he's promised immunity, say, Art thou become low like unto us? Meaning his promises all these decades and centuries of coming and saving them from hell if they follow his lead come to naught. He doesn't have that power. But I think he wants to reap as much death and destruction as he can. And that's why the typical thing of the globalist is creating conflict. That's a real sign that they believe in the satanic agenda. Well, the most seductive thing about the, the energy of this world is, is it can give you power and energy at a certain level. It's very seductive. And that's how the devil's got so many good men and women basically pulling his, his system uh, but my God, I, I just can't imagine how they can sell their children out to it or the culture to something dedicated to death. All right, shifting gears, you tried to get into Al-Qaeda, this latest defense intelligence report that got leaked to Judicial Watch. That really shows we've got good people inside the government. We're seeing a real uh, positive uh, rebellion against globalist control when our military continues to say no to expanding ISIS backing. Uh, so give us a breakdown on that and then the Russia situation, the George Soros situation, the China situation. Well, ISIS is still the top priority of the government because they are intent to take down Assad. Now, this is a Western-trained medical doctor uh, who is actually quite a mild-mannered person. He's not like the strong man that his father was. Um, and, uh, you know... This Syria is going to be a basket case of civil war if they ever take down Assad, which I think is inevitable, probably going to happen this year. Uh, uh, the Iraqi parliament has presented evidence uh, of uh, video evidence of U.S. helicopters landing in ISIS controlled areas and distributing arms and ammunition, resupplying ISIS. I mean, that means that you've got to lie or command your helicopter pilots, who are normal, very patriotic people, into being absolutely silent about this mission. I'm sure they're telling them this is a black operation, this is uh, national security, top secret, you're not allowed to talk about it ever, and uh, otherwise you're going to get a lot of whistleblowers complaining that they have. I mean... Other fighter pilots, as I mentioned before, are starting to complain now that they're not being allowed to attack ISIS targets. They're being made to wait up to an hour before the White House authorizes them. But by that time, sorry, I hit my microphone. These hey, that happens sometimes, Joel. They're having to wait an hour. These people have scurried to another place. And so when I've seen the videos of the various fighter bomber attacks of ISIS buildings, they're only attacking empty buildings. You don't see people. And when they do find troops on the ground, they go to permission, and they say, stand by, stand by, and then they run out of fuel, they've got to come back. Almost 50% of the um, Navy air attack bomber, fighter bombers, F-18s, have to return to ship with their ordnance intact because they did not get authorization to attack ISIS targets. I think at the top level, they're trying to protect ISIS because they know it's a U.S. creation they want ISIS stronger, not weaker, in order to take down Assad. And that's what's happened in Palmyra in Syria. Now Assad really has his military around the Damascus area. About a third of the country is fully under his control. And ISIS is slowly getting... So the U.S. is not fighting ISIS. This is a lie. It's a major big lie. And... Um, uh, you know, the second reason for creating ISIS, of course, was to internationalize the war on terror. 9-11 gave the world this reason, you know, yes, the U.S. can go uh, rampaging through the world because they were attacked in 9-11.
and but they felt relatively immune to the process. Now that ISIS is coming and systematically beheading Christians and then taking down French journalists, British journalists, German journalists, etc., everybody's getting hit by ISIS, and so it's becoming an international war. That's in turn creating the excuse to create a pan-Arab army, that is those associated with the West, Saudi Arabia, uh, Jordan. Yeah, Saudi Arabia launches the attack with the West, then creates an army to counter its own proxy troops that just infiltrate back in and join that army, and it's all done transparently, uh, but the public is, can't even play checkers to understand chess, uh, and it, it's then a way to take liberties in the West in the name of countering the new ISIS threat. Well, and Israel's very much involved in this. Uh, the Mossad is a seamless relationship with the CIA. They have the top Arab Israelis who have gone in and are directing, I think, most of the ISIS fighters. I think you will find that most of the major factions, um, you look at their leaders and they're actually an Israeli Arab agent who are getting direct. I mean, the ISIS fighter themselves, they don't think or know that they're controlled by the U.S. or British intelligence. It's gone through the Israelis and then it goes through Arab Israelis. By the way, you were saying that a year ago. That's starting to come out that Israel's at the heart of this. Uh, and when we come back, ISIS came out in their official magazine and said, stop the conspiracy theories claiming we work for Western intelligence. It's hurting our recruiting. So I want to get your take on that. Then we'll look at the South China Sea situation, Ukraine, and more with Joel Skousen of worldaffairsbrief.org. I'm Alex Jones. I won't take amnesty battle directly to the Supreme Court reading from Drudge. He'll just simply do it by executive action. Joel Skousen's with us five minutes into the next hour. We'll give you some of the latest headlines at Infowars.com after he leaves us at 8 after. We were getting into Al-Qaeda, changing its name to ISIS to confuse the public. That does show real hubris by the establishment when they got caught running the anti-Assad operation funding Al-Qaeda. So they just changed the name, but they don't even change the flags. And then now they can take our liberties, claiming they've got to keep us safe fighting them while turning them loose and build a pan-Arab army to counter them. They can have them invade African countries then send in Afrikan to respond to them. The problem is the general public's ignorant, but the military is not. And I guess that's why we've seen this 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 purge. But uh, it does seem like an over-the-top, bold move, Joel Skousen, to, to do this. But they've really done it in front of everyone. Uh, what do you expect to come next? Then let's get into the South China Sea situation. Well, you know, you could never do this without controlled media, Alex. Uh, the... I mean, I don't have a lot of inside access to secret things going on in government. And I can see, of course, with my trained eye, when this false flag type, uh, when they're making things up. I mean, as a military person, for a, a, a unit the size of ISIS, you know, 50, 60,000 people with huge weapons to, to come to pass, to come to being in less than a year, and our satellite technology was completely surprised, that's impossible. That's impossible. Or giant columns coming in and massing. I mean, they would have been obliterated instantly by war dogs. No, they, they let them build up. And that's right. And after the attack on Ramadi, they went and had a column of rejoicing ISIS troops streamed out for three miles away from the city. And, and I asked, where are our U.S. drones? Where are our F-18s? I mean, these are sitting ducks out there, all ISIS, and nobody attacked them. I mean, that's proof, in my estimation, that ISIS is a controlled terror organization just like al-qaeda was and notice they're now retiring al-qaeda killing all its leadership uh, who we yeah. know were double agents i mean who buys that the head or number two guy in al-qaeda adam gadan is the grandson of the former head of the adl i mean does anyone really buy that <laughs> let me tell you where this is heading remember the iran nuclear deal is only a stalling tactic because israel can't attack iran while until syria is out of the way uh, so the U.S., in order to justify t standing down in their attack against Iran, proposed making a deal. That deal is made to trap Iran. They know that Iran is cheating on the agreement, so that's basically they're going to sign any kind of deal and then use it to say Iran violated. After Syria is taken out of the way, I think sometime later this year, then you're going to see Iran being ruled in violation, and shortly thereafter Israel will, in fact, attack Iran 
and it will completely rearrange the Middle East. It will not, however, rise to World War III because Russia and China will not come to the aid of Iran or Syria any more than they did Iraq. They have too much to gain by eavesdropping on U.S. military operations in terms of, uh, you know, they've really got to get a handle before they attack in World War III on the U.S. jamming capabilities so that their Soviet-type forces are not jammed, and that's what the new SS-400 is about. We're going to break in a moment. I want to spend the last five minutes uh, with you specifically on Soros saying, be nice to China or World War III. Uh, the spy planes getting threatened, uh, all of this. Is this just more of that buildup while our government gives the reactors to China to help their nuclear submarines operate quieter? Uh, you can really see them building up these enemies while getting the autonomous robot uh, aircraft ready to go and other secret weapons. We'll be back with the third hour. Joel Skalzin finishing up the time we have from worldaffairsbrief.com. Uh, on George Soros saying, be nice to China, and then the latest on the Ukraine. Well, this is a complex subject because the U.S. is raising the, the tone of their apparent opposition to China, but they're doing nothing. Nothing is more telling than the U.S. saying, we are going to respect the 12-mile limit around Fiery Reef K, where they're developing this runway and this um, you know, out of a, a small island of sand there in, in the Spratleys. I mean, telling China you're going to respect the 12 mile limit is a uh, tacit admission of sovereignty there. The, the Spratly Island is a very complex situation. It's over 300 miles. It's got nearly 40 or 50 um, significant outcroppings in the ocean. Uh, and what's interesting, though, is that Vietnam has occupied about eight or ten of them. China's occupied about 12 of them. The Philippines, three or four. four. Brunei and Malaysia have also occupied some of these. I mean, trying to sort out who owns the whole caboodle is, is going to be a long-term process. And I think the only way it's going to be sorted out is the big 800-pound girl in the room. China will build up enough military bases there that basically throw the others out. But I believe that China is establishing a string of pearl strategy. And that is, you can have a huge mainland base like China, but you've got to have a blue water navy to conquer the world and maintain it. And that means you've got to have a series of bases, not only air bases, but naval refueling and repair bases uh, uh, surrounding you. And the natural place to do that is in the island chain. Sure, so they're doing what the US did in the Spanish-American War, establishing our empire with Pacific coaling stations. Yeah, or uh, that uh, Britain did with putting naval bases all around the world to handle, and that was one of its problems in World War II. The Navy was so spread out that they couldn't respond to the German attack uh, in time. But uh, the point that I want to make, though, is that China is a long way already f uh, a ways from attacking the West. Its Blue Water Navy is only about 50% built, it's heading for 450 ships versus our sub-300 uh, warship uh, numbers. We're going down, they're going up. But still, the earliest that China really would be confident in attacking the West is, is the next decade, 20, 2020, 21, 22, or 23, and the same with Russia. Now, Russia could attack now because it has the nuclear missiles that are ready. China's just beginning now to MIRV their missiles or multiple independent re uh, re-entry vehicles, that's what MIRV stand for. In other words, multiple warheads on a missile. And so I don't think there's any chance, despite what Soros has said, despite what China's saying, remember we could go to war if you do something stupid here. Uh, China's always taken a hard line in terms of its reaction, almost as bad as North Korea in terms of overreacting to any U.S. surveillance flight, and they'll continue to do so. But I think it's posturing on both sides the U.S. is posturing about standing up to China. It has no intention to sure, do Sure, sure. So. Couldn't a collapse of China economically that a lot of people see happening uh, put this back even more, this big war? It could. Um, I don't see a collapse of the Chinese economy any more likely than the collapse of the dollar that has been prophesied okay. and, and hyped sure. for ever since 2010. These are big nations, uh, big economies, 
Uh, it's true, both are in, in, in slow decline uh, because of the, uh, the worsening trade situation. But nothing that I foresee indicates uh, any kind of collapse sure. that could slow, slow this down. And, 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 and but, I agree there's a long-term plan to harden facilities to get ready for a big war, uh, but I don't see them being there yet. But the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. But as we said in the last hour, this is not just men we're fighting with here. It's a very old entity that we read about in the Bible. Joel Skousen, great job. Thanks for the time.